Times certainly have changed, you know, as is evidenced by this 1982 copy of Smash Hits that we've just found in an antique shop. The Get Smart Letters page includes this. Are Mark Holman and David Ball interested in sport? And what football teams do they follow? For the uninitiated, uh, Mark Holman and David Ball were the synth-pop duo Soft Cell. And the answer? I'm afraid neither of them have any interest in sport, have never supported any teams and don't like football. No attempt to soften the blow whatsoever. It's great, isn't it? It's like, are Mark Holman and David Ball in any way like 1930s gangsters? I'm afraid Mark and David have no interest in the 30s and organised crime means nothing to them. Are Mark and David in any way like Renaissance painters? No, they hate Velasquez and Caravaggio. Different times. Sometimes, when you see a town for the first time, it rears up unannounced from the used and unused homogenous spaces around it. Another time, it just pops up an accessed file that you didn't know you owned. Langothlands like that. It seems I've always had it somewhere, lurking in the dark behind my eyelids, all bigger on the inside. See if you can access it too. Close your eyes, listen to my voice. Don't pause the film look from inside your eyelid. It's like that scene in Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger's 1946 masterpiece, A Matter of Life and Death, where David Niven undergoes his brain operation. You can watch the colours drip and merge and turn monochrome and then go swimming in the blackness. It feels to me like the section in 2001 A Space Odyssey, where they're shutting down Hal, the Daisy Daisy bit, you know the one pulling out the files, one by one, while the computerised voice slows down and slurs. There it is, the concertina folds, the dark green water and the light breeze blowing across it. Langothlan. The bridge at Langothlan is in fact one of the seven wonders of Wales. The other six, if you're interested, are Russell T Davis, Terry Griffiths, the Manic Street Bridge is the Holy Bible, Richard Burton's last interview on Parkinson, TJ's nightclub in Newport and of course Christian Bale's meltdown on the set of Terminator Salvation. You don't get it Cummings, you don't get it do you when I'm trying to film a scene? That's the one if you've never accessed it before do yourself a favour look at the video as well not just listen to the audio. There's a little guy green screened as a robot with a cardboard box and just his face sticking out. It's a thing of beauty. I'm trying to do a scene. I'm trying to do a scene for coming your way. And Mike is sitting reading Smash Hits. Why is Mike reading Smash Hits? Why are you reading Smash Hits? Why are you looking at that picture of Heaven 17? You don't get it, do you? Oh, in the article. You're interested in the article. Me and you are done professionally. Done. This is quite a sweet. We see that you get it. He doesn't get it. He doesn't understand. He thinks it's important to look at ballroom blitz while I'm Dan, just do a take speech. five, then we'll come back. I don't want to take five. I want him to get what's going on here. Me and you are done. You're a nice guy, but that doesn't cut it. We are done professionally.
there's a nice sense of slight cultural otherness here like a tentative introduction to Wales the end of one line the embarkation point for another whenever I used to go to Malvern as a young man and face the town and the Midlands plain above it I used to feel that same sort of distinction as though the known world Worcestershire, the black country were before me and the unknown world Herefordshire in Wales were the other side, the dark side of the mountain like Future World and West World and of course Cummings World I do like a bit of measurement as nomenclature and just as the High Street in Oxford is known locally as the High, this stretch of the Langothland Canal on the way towards the aqueduct is known as the Narrows. Lovely. It's far too old a town of course to have been constructed purely for pleasure but it does have that atmosphere, a little like Matlock, an inland resort. I'm also reminded of that Star Trek episode, Spectre of the Gun. Do you remember that one? Where they have to enact the gunfight at the OK Corral, the clock hanging in the sky, and the building fronts just ghostly facades with nothing behind them. Nothing ghostly about Langothlan. Here, it's as if nature is standing in for the residential streets and industrial units. Clam is a religious settlement and the Gotham part refers to St. Colin who was uh, a 6th century monk who arrived here by Coracle. Coracle making was big in these parts until the 1950s apparently as it was elsewhere. Ironbridge for instance. It's a unique dedication though. There are links to Langollen in Brittany and to Colin in Cornwall where my uh, friend Mike Barker got married. Incidentally, Mike's auntie Janet used to go out with Graham Bonnet from Rainbow. As in Zippy and Bongo? No! As in, I get the same old dreams, same time every night, fall to the ground, then I wake up. That one. Uh huh. Hmm. Oh, she has other connections too. She was in Sainsbury's in Sheffield once and she, and she trapped Martin Fry's fingers in a supermarket trolley. Great! Yeah, it hurt him. It really was a case of that was then, but this is... Ouch! Those recumbent fronds of those underwater reeds are very beautiful, very captivating, aren't they? Yeah, it reminds me of a, of a painting, a pre-Raphaelite painting that used to, used to scare me as a child. Oh, Ophelia by John Everett Millet. Yeah, I remember that. that that's, that's the one? Yeah, where Elizabeth Siddle was the model and she uh, modelled for Millet in her bathtub and caught pneumonia, I think, and her father came round and threatened to beat him up, yeah. I'm not surprised, there was a lot of scandal with those pre-Raphaelite chappies. Mm, indeed, white lead and all of that.
Yeah, didn't uh, didn't the painter R Rossetti go off with Morris's wife? Morrissey. No, Morris. Neil Morrissey. No, Morris. He was no, in Morris. I can't think of his first name. It, Neil Morrissey was in Men Behaving Badly. Um, he went off with Les Dennis's wife, Amanda Holden. No, not that one. Not that one. Morris. William Morris. Yeah, him as well. What did he go off with Amanda Holden too? Yes. What a cat. gauge fast flowing waters of the canal. It's fairly unique in canal terms. It's also thoroughly Welsh in its greyness and its greenness. It's also a little cubist, a little Juan Gris, a little Georges Braque. They weren't Welsh, but I'm sure they'd have had a good time here. Horseshoe Falls, a little way out of Langogman along the canal. And what a lovely stretch of canal it is. This is where water is directed into the Shropshire Union Canal. I think it actually meets it somewhere near Nantwich. Quite appropriate that, I think, for Shropshire and Cheshire, although both utterly and uniquely themselves are, to my Midlands mind, a bristle with whisperings and intimations of Wales, of a land beyond. Rug Chapel, Wales' equal best ecclesiastical spot. Painted up a treat in 1637, five years before the Phoenix sank in Landudno Bay. Inside, it's a compact, tightly packed feast of friezes and panels, fruits, beasts, hourglasses, skeletons, memento mori, reasons to live, celebrations of death and life. An awful lot of reasons to get down on the floor next to the wood panelling and get the knees of your white trousers a bit dirty. enormously excited about entering the chapel. I am never happier than when surrounded by 17th century woodwork. 
I'd have been very worried if I'd have thought that of myself when I was 15 and searching for rare electronic records in Sounds Around Record Shop in the Swan Centre in Kidderminster. I would barely have believed it. But then I guess there's an awful lot of things that that can be said about. I couldn't really have comprehended being 50 or any of the trappings therein. I also don't think I'd have approved of this particular tie, shirt, suit and plimsolls combination. But I guess there's quite a lot of people who still don't approve. Stourbridge, we referred to white trousers as larrys. Everyone did, even my mother did. She asked me if I needed to, her to wash my larrys. Um, and it was uh, in reference to the white suit that Larry Grayson used to wear on 70s television. It was particularly immortalised in local culture when a friend of mine who was in a famous Stourbridge pop band of the time shouted down from the 18th floor of the long disappeared Byron House flats in Collygate mind your larrys to another friend of mine who was also in a different Stourbridge pop band of the time um, and who was wearing a pair of white trousers and sliding down the hill as he fell over in an attempt to catch the number nine bus to Hales Owen. <laughs> 